has said that Israel is a small country surrounded by hostile Arab states, and we need to we need to be as brutal as we are in order to guarantee our own safety. But that ends up in a situation that you've described as apartheid. I was hoping you could, for the benefit of the audience, describe why you and Virginia Tilly characterized the occupation in that way. Uh, first, let me uh, 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 correct one thing. It, w uh, it was not the characterization of the occupation mm -hmm. which was the easy part of the argument. The, the uh, undertaking that we uh, accepted was to look at whether apartheid was applicable to the Palestinian people as a whole, mm -hmm. which included then the refugees and uh, those living as a minority, a discriminated minority in Israel. Uh, and even those that were living in involuntary exile denied the right of return and so on. So our, uh, the, the, the central thesis of our study was that the evidence supported a deliberate policy of seeking to maintain the, uh, a Jewish state by victimizing and discriminating against the Palestinian people. And part of that tactic of discrimination was to fragment the uh, Palestinian population so they wouldn't, starting with the Nakba itself, the, uh, the expulsion of as many as 750,000 uh, Palestinians from where they had been living in order to enable the establishment of a Jewish state that could claim to be also democratic. And to be democratic, they had to get rid of uh, the non-Jewish uh, elements of the society that naturally wouldn't support the establishment of a Jewish state within uh, a non-Jewish society. Uh, so that um, the, the definition of the crime of apartheid, which was initially premised on uh, the South African uh, racist regime, but was not tied, it's important to understand, that it was not tied to that historical precedent. It's a crime against humanity in the statute of the International Criminal Court. And there's a separate international convention on the suppression and prevention of the crime of apartheid. So it's a freestanding international crime that's based on the, uh, the uh, commission of acts of brutality by one ethnicity uh, against another ethnicity for the purpose of maintaining uh, a situation of dominance and exploitation. And we felt that the evidence overwhelmingly supported this understanding of the nature of apartheid. And if you Interestingly, it, it caused a, our study caused a firestorm at the UN, which was quite helpful in disseminating the study. <laughs> uh, uh, Nikki Haley was our; she was the U.S. ambassador who became our primary publicity, unpaid publicity <laughs> agent. Uh, but the truth is that Israeli leaders from the time of Ben-Gurion had been saying in Hebrew, never in English, in Hebrew to the, uh, either to their uh, uh, elite uh, entourage or to the public 
that they would become an apartheid state if they didn't solve the Palestinian problem. And, and so it was, in a way, not a very uh, radical statement from the understanding that uh, people living in Israel themselves had of their relationship uh, between uh, Jews and Palestinians. And leaders as recently as Olmert and uh, Barak used the terminology of apartheid in uh, describing what would happen if they didn't find a, a solution. And the, uh, and the kinds of solutions uh, they talked about were some kind of, uh, at, at various points, some kind of separate Palestinian entity or uh, solving the problem by uh, ethnic cleansing, which goes back to the uh, uh, Nakba itself in 48. Uh, so this uh, issue of apartheid is very important in my view in thinking about whether peace is ever possible between these two peoples. And just as, and there I think the South African precedent is helpful because it was clear that you couldn't have interracial peace without dismantling the structures of, of apartheid in South Africa. And what happened when the Africana elite decided to release Mandela was a readiness to uh, dismantle uh, the apartheid structure as a prelude to establishing a way of coexisting of the diverse ethnicities coexisting as equals within a constitutional framework. That has to happen if there is to be a sustainable peace as distinct from a ceasefire in uh, Israel-Palestine. And for that to happen, there has to be a fundamental change in the uh, calculations and sensibility of the leadership in Israel. And one doesn't see that on the horizon, but as I uh, said last night, no one saw that on the horizon in South Africa either. And it will be kept a dark secret until the moment when the decision is ready to be made. Because it's too, it encourages the opposition too much to acknowledge the possibility until it becomes a necessity. See, and the purpose, I think, of BDS and the uh, uh, movement of solidarity is to make it a necessity. It's a non-violent uh, uh, way of exerting pressure in order to convert a, what seems like an impossibility into a political necessity.